hour is going to be a little hodgepodge. you got a lot of different stories just really need to go to. Maybe take your thoughts on as well. 1-866-331-TALK. 1-866-331-8255. You know, it's funny. It's all uh, linked together in a weird sort of way. It's a tapestry of crap. A tapestry of dependence and, and, and um, you know, the, the resultant sheep-like obedience that's that's taking shape in America. We used to all kind of be a little wild and free, and it had its downside, absolutely. But, you know, and, and we, we kind of built the institutions of the country and the helping hands uh, available to people. Um, yeah, you know, uh, that became a bigger and bigger part of America. And, and, you know, everybody has a different idea of exactly when on the spectrum it hit the sweet spot. You know, you ask 10 people, you get 10 different opinions. Um, I think uh, most of us gathered here today would agree that where we are right now, the government is just involved in way too much, way too many aspects of life. And it's it's incredibly expensive and inefficient, and wasteful. And and the very bureaucracy of government sucks away 10, 30, 50, 80 percent of the money spent, leaving 10 or 20 or 30, 40 percent left to do the actual work that we're, we're allegedly trying to perform as opposed to keeping the money in private hands or, or even local hands um, and, and getting the work done. So you've got that. Then at the same time, you have a situation like this. This is this is not, by the way, the story I thought it was, because this is a, a string of these stories that have arisen. But we've got yet another bust of little girls running a lemonade stand, this time in Midway, Georgia. There was a case a couple of weeks ago before we went on vacation that was not quite what it appeared because these kids were, um, they were like working a NASCAR race or something like that. And they were selling refreshments without a license. And eh, it's a little different thing. It's a pretty organized deal. Which, of course, as you know, is my entrepreneurial dream, selling loose beers during traffic jams. (laughs) Or like, you know, when people are leaving Sears Point, like that nightmarish, hellish, traffic jam i got caught in a couple of weeks ago uh selling loose beers to people in cars or you know soft drinks too naturally uh let's see so where were we oh here it is um midway georgia there's three girls they're like 10 11 and 14 something like that they want to go to the local big water park but they don't have any money to go they're not they're not uh, rich kids they you know, and they're trying to scrape up the money to go by selling lemonade in the hot weather. Then they met the long arm of the law, the local police chief. The girls had started up their stand in Midway, Georgia, when police chief Kelly Morningstar and a deputy drove by. They told us to shut it down, said 10-year-old Skylar Roberts. It's kind of crazy that we couldn't sell lemonade, added 14-year-old Cass- Cassidy. Boy, that's misspelled Dixon. I mean, it's her name. She can spell it any way she wants, but that's so wacky. It was fun, but we had to listen to the cops and shut it down. The chief of police defended his action and received the support of Midway's mayor. Quote, we told him, we understand you guys are young, but still, you're breaking the law and we can't let you do it anymore. The law is the law and we have to be consistent with how we enforce the laws. The city law requires a business and food permit, $50 a day, even if the stand was at the home of one of the girls. And it was entirely managed by tiny little kids who were running in and out of the house making lemonade. Speaking of lemonade and the making thereof, listen to this S, would you? Health issues were also a concern, said the chief of police. Quote, we're not aware of how the lemonade was made, who made the lemonade, and what the lemonade was made with. So we acted accordingly by city ordinance. Where do you even begin with this? The lemonade was made by my neighbors and uh, with water, I'm sure. And uh, am I 100% sure? No, I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to get home to kiss my wife and kids tonight. Might die in a car wreck. Who knows what will happen? Might get shot by some scumbag who the cops don't have the time or budget to arrest, allegedly. But I am sure enough that these cute little girls selling lemonade aren't making it out of, I don't know, urine and arsenic or battery acid and and, and glass shards. I'm so sure as a grown-up, I'm going to give them a quarter for a glass of the lemonade. I don't need the freaking mayor. I don't need the chief of police standing. Whoa, 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 sir, Mr. Getty. 
You better not do that. We're going to check this out for you. I don't need the government helping me buy a little Dixie cup of lemonade from my neighbor girls. Not only do I not need it, I don't want it. In fact, not only do I not want it, I hate the idea of you imposing yourself in that relationship. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Land of the free, my sweet ass. Unbelievable. Now, your typical bleached-haired, dumbass news person would end the report as follows. But there's a happy ending to the story. The Coastal Source Water Park said... What is the Coastal Source? Is that the newspaper? Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's, that's the newspaper. The newspaper and the water parks had teamed up to give the girls tickets to the water park. Back to you, uh, Jim. Uh, how are things looking at the weather desk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we still have the problem. We still have the problem. Oh, my God, you as an adult. What have you accomplished in your life? Some of you are young listening. We know. Thanks for listening to the Armstrong and Getty Show. Most of you have built careers. You've you've dealt with with death and discouragement. You've gotten an education. You've built a business. You've raised children. You've battled disease. You've been in car wrecks. You've gone under the knife. You've voted. You've raised money. You've gone to tea party meetings. But, but you are incapable of deciding whether to buy a little cup of lemonade from the neighbor girls, says the nanny government. Now, granted, I'm a bit high strung, and I've always been <clears throat> staunchly independent, even as a toddler. My parents like to tell stories. I should not reveal this cherished family story, because we're not close enough, you and I, but I will. It illustrates the point. Uh, and by the way, my 11-year-old daughter, Delaney May, absolutely loves this. When I was two, three years old, I used to regularly say, if people would try to help me, I would say, doey do it, doey's self. I will do it myself. I'll try 40 times to tie my shoes. I don't want your help. So granted, I'm a little bit of a nut on this sort of thing. But to get back to my previous rant, which would tear up my throat if I did it again, if you're not insulted... By someone saying, you're not smart enough. And, and, and they are stating it outright. The California Assembly, Mark Leno and his buddies, were trying to book for the show, Scott, so I'll try not to be insulting. The, the, don't, don't make my job any more difficult. All right. So the, the California Assembly, the do-gooders on the school board, oh, my God, the board of, of psychovisors in S- S- San Francisco. The local police chief here in uh, Midway, Georgia, and the mayor. Do you not understand? They are stating outright to your face, you're not smart enough to decide whether to buy a little cup of lemonade from your neighbor child. You are absolutely not smart enough to figure out what should be in your kid's uh, brown bag lunch at school. We won't, not only will we tell you what you should do no that's not good enough we won't let you as a parent do it at all because you're incapable we'll take care of feeding your kid for you now i want you to picture this because we've gone so far down the road of 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 being in love with and depending on the great benevolent government what if your neighbor said to you I'm tempted to use Scott, but you know I, I'd rather everybody use use their own reaction. What if your neighbor wa- knocked on your door uh, one day and said, "Hey, uh, hey, uh, Ed, hey, Janet, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start feeding your kid for you because I don't really like what you feed her. I don't like what you feed him, and um, and I'm not sure you got the money or whatever. So send him over to my place. I'm going to start feeding him every single day." Some of you would say, okay, cool. Well, F you. But almost the rest, almost, you know, 99% of us, certainly listening to the Armstrong and Getty show, would say, are you out of your effing mind? 
What are you talking about? Get off of my patio. Get off of my lawn. Go back to your home, you psychopath. But when the great benevolent nanny government does it, there's a huge segment of society that not is is not only not so insulted that they want to commit an act of violence, but certainly not encourage you to, but uh, you got the impulse, don't you? Not only are they not insulted enough to want to smash up windows with an axe handle, but they act like they deserve it, and it ought to happen, and it has to happen. It, uh, I tell you what, who, who's the psycho here? How far have we let ourselves go as a society? My God. The police chief and the mayor say you can't decide whether to buy a Dixie cup of lemonade. We'll take care of that for you. You know, if you have any response ever other than a two-word that includes the word you, I don't get you. Maybe you don't get me. But I can live with that. This is the Armstrong and Getty Show. Today, I'm not feeling that.